What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Vincent Esposito and today we're going to talk about two tests that you can do at home to see if you have proper amounts of stomach acid. But before we get to that, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. Come out videos every week, nutrition, health, wellness, longevity, plant-based recipes, gut health. If you're interested in any of that, you can find information here. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So I've talked about stomach acid before on this channel in my GERD video. I will link that above here, but I really think it's important to kind of stress and go over how important proper amounts of stomach acid really are when it comes to digestion, gut health, which also affects systemic health. So stomach acid is particularly important for aiding in the digestion of proteins as a lot of protein digestion, a lot of protein breakdown happens in the stomach. Proper amounts of stomach acid are also needed to trigger the release of pepsin, which is also really important for protein breakdown, again, in the stomach. Proper amounts of stomach acid are needed to properly break down food in general, and when you're not breaking down food properly, we then are not able to assimilate and absorb the nutrients we need from our food. So having the ability to break down our food into a substance that we could then absorb is crucial to getting the nutrients we need. And this is kind of the beginning part of that whole phase. Stomach acid is also really important to kill off certain bacteria and pathogens that could cause issues down the road. So generally, if you have some sort of gut dysbiosis, whether it's leaky gut, SIBO, uh, other kind of gut issues, food intolerances, some of these usually come about because we don't have enough stomach acid in the first place because we need that to break down these pathogens that ultimately end up in the gut. Pro uh, proper amounts of stomach acid are crucial to the pro to release things like pancreatic enzymes and bile, which also help in digesting food once food enters the small intestine. So if that environment is not acidic enough due to the acidic time leaving the stomach going into the small intestines, then we don't get the proper release of pancreatic enzymes and of bile that we need to break down the food, which again, as I mentioned before, leads to malabsorption and malnutrition down the road. So as you can see here, it is really hard to overstate the importance of having proper amounts of stomach acid as it is, as it is basically the key to unlocking proper digestion. And without adequate amounts of stomach acid, you could see how the rest of the digestive process is kind of a house of cards that can fall apart if you pull the first one out. So some of the symptoms associated with low amounts of stomach acid include bloating, cramping, chest pain, heartburn type symptoms, gas, maybe pain in the throat, and undigested food in the stool. And like I mentioned before, if undigested food ends up getting into the later parts of the bowels, whether it's the small intestines or the large intestines, it could lead to pathogenic overgrowths of certain bacteria that end up crowding out good bacteria or getting into areas where they shouldn't be, which causes a variety of issues all around the body, whether from anything from autoimmune type symptoms to anxiety, depression, to food intolerances, and the list goes on. Now, I mentioned this in my GERD video, but I think it's really important to revisit it here. Oftentimes, um, many people end up taking antacids or proton pump inhibitors or H2 blockers thinking the problem is too much acid in the stomach following a meal, when in fact that is the exact opposite approach to take. Usually you get these symptoms because you have low amounts of stomach acid and adding these medications will, yes, decrease symptoms in the short term, but make this a much bigger problem down the road because it inhibits the stomach's ability produce adequate amounts of stomach acid. And as I mentioned before, when we don't have enough stomach acid, it is possible the rest of the digestive processes begin to fall apart and you could develop more serious chronic conditions. So with all that said, let's go over a couple tests that you can do at home to see if you have adequate amounts of stomach acid. The first one is known as the baking soda test. So this is done on an empty stomach. Usually first thing in the morning is ideal you're going to take a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and add it to a glass of water and stirring it to combine. You are then going to drink this solution and set a timer for three or four minutes. And what you're gonna do is monitor how you feel over those three or four minutes. Now, the normal reaction, you should experience 
belching or burping. The reason being, if you go back to grade school and remember those volcano experiments where you put an acid and a base together and you get this kind of explosion of gas, that's exactly what happens in your stomach. So if you do get this amount, a high amount of burping or belching, this is actually a good sign and means that you probably have good amounts of stomach acid in your stomach. The alternative is you set your timer and you experience minimal or no symptoms at all. And if you do get this, this is a sign that you might have low amounts of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. And if you do get this result, we are going to move on to test number two. So test number two is known as the hydrochloric acid test. So what you're gonna need for this test is a bottle of betaine hydrochloric acid supplements. Now they're very inexpensive, um, but they are really important to kind of get this process going. So you're gonna need to get yourself that first. To get this test started, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to have a meal with at least 20 grams of protein. Generally, you're looking for a fist size or so portion of protein. And this could be any form of protein you want. So if you're plant-based, you could do things like chickpeas, lentils, lima beans, pick any one you want, but you're looking for at least 20 grams of that protein. And you also wanna be consuming it with salad, leafy greens, and the rest of your meal in general. Now to get the test started, you are gonna take a few bites of your meal. Uh, at four or five, you could go up to about halfway. And once you're about halfway done with your protein portion of your meal, you're going to take one betaine hydrochloric acid pill. You take the supplement about halfway through, then you finish your meal, and then you monitor how you feel over the next hour. If you feel some sort of digestive symptoms, whether it's burping, reflux, gas, anything in between, that's actually a good sign, meaning that you have good amounts of stomach acid in your stomach, you have good amounts of hydrochloric acid. If you do not have any symptoms or even relief of symptoms, this is a sign that you probably have inadequate amounts of hydrochloric acid in your stomach. And what you're going to do the next day is at a similar meal where you have a similar amount of protein, you're gonna repeat the process with two betaine hydrochloric acid pills. And then again, you're gonna go through the same process. So you are going to see how you feel. If with two, if with two pills, you start feeling symptoms, then you, you start there and you're gonna work your way back to one over time. If you don't feel any symptoms again, you're going to repeat the process on day three with three, et cetera, and you're gonna work this up to five pills at home on day five. Now you are going to continue to take these with each meal until you start noticing those symptoms. So say you get to four pills a day and on day four, and then you start feeling symptoms. You're gonna dial it back to three with each meal. And then from there, you're gonna basically take three per meal until you start feeling those symptoms, dial it back to two, on and on. And that is gonna be how you basically recreate or recreate an environment where you have proper amounts of stomach acid in the stomach. So if you're doing this for about a week and you still have symptoms like reflux or GERD, or if you have things like floating stools or pale stools, constipation, or a lot of gas and bloating, it's time that you probably work with some sort of functional doctor to find the root cause of what's going on. And this could be a variety of things from a lack of pancreatic enzymes or bile production, some sort of pathogenic overgrowth of either parasites or SIBO or IBS, and clearing out that before you come back and fix this issue. But I hope you enjoyed the information today. Um, again, these are two kind of quick tests you can do at home, and it could give you some useful information that you can use to better your health going forward. But if you did like today's video, please like and subscribe to the channel below, coming out with videos every week, nutrition, health, wellness, longevity, plant-based recipes, and gut health. You can find that here, uh, and really appreciate you know the support and feedback we've gotten so far. But until then, take care, and we'll see you next time.